Okay, this is the first section in the series chapter in the Core 2 book. And this is using something called a method of differences. And we're going to use this reference of differences to find the sum. And you know, we use this symbol for a sum of a series. And the series is just a sequence with plus terms in between um, each term. So I'm going to have 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus dot 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 up to whatever term, nth term of that um, uh, series. And um, the method we're going to use, I know there's some stuff over here. Yeah, um, I'm going to try and explain it in a slightly different way, hopefully in a way that it might make a little bit more sense. Let's say I want to find the sum from the first term to the nth term of some sort of function of, it won't be x, of r um, from the first term to the nth term. Now it may be that there's no real easy way of doing that. You know, if there's a common difference between the terms, you can, or a common ratio, you can use what you've done in normal maths. But let's say that, you know, it's not straightforward just to try and work out what the terms are or there's no real, you can't really see any patterns to find the sum, then what we can do is we can write that function f of r as two different functions, equivalent functions where we have a difference. This is the important bit here. We want a difference. Okay, so as an example, or basically what we've got here is f of r is the same as g of r minus h of r. An example over here might make it a bit easier. Let's say f of r was this function, very easy one, 3x squared. Well, that can be written as 2x squared. Uh, let's make that 4x squared because we want a difference. Uh, 4x squared minus x squared. So can you see what we've done? We've written our function here as two different functions where we have a difference between them. And it may be, well, we can't really find the sum of this. That might be difficult to do. But we can use this reference of differences to help us find the sum of this. I'll show you what I mean. It'll make more sense when we do some questions. So let's say I write out this sequence here, g of r, uh, or series. And let's say it gives me these numbers, 5, 6, 7, up to 94. OK. And let's say that I write out this color code, this h of r. And let's say this gives me um, these numbers, uh, 6 plus 7 plus 8. Plus, okay, and let's say that we finish at 95. And we've got the difference between those two functions. So we're trying to do the function at the top, the one in purple, subtract the function at the bottom. So that's meant to be a big subtract sign. Now, if you do that, can you see lots of stuff is going to cancel out? Because you'll have a 6 here, and then you'll be taking away 6. You'll have a 7 here, you'll be taking away a 7. You'll actually have an 8 here, won't you? And that'll cancel out with that 8 and so on. And then what's going to happen at the end is that you'll have a 94 here and um, a 94 there. They will cancel out. Can you see the pattern of cancelling out is sort of going to the thing that's to the diagonal of it, to the left diagonal. Now, if you do that, all you're left with is 5 minus positive 95. In other words, 5 minus 95. So if you did all of that top uh, series, uh, take away all of the bottom series, all you're left with is 5 minus 95. In other words, you're just left with negative 90. Yeah, this is the method of differences. 
and there's always going to be some sort of pattern that's going to help you cancel out what the terms are and we're always going to be looking for those patterns and if you write your series out like this yeah it make it's helpful to see where the cancelling out pattern is so first example you'll notice on all of these questions that we do there's a pattern in that part a is normally the algebraic part of the question where basically um, you're proving that one statement equals another so some single statement is equivalent to or a, sing, a single expression is equal to an expression which is the difference of two things okay and in part b is using part a so in part b you're using part a a and the methods of differences method of differences to find the sum of the series right so let's start with part a right so we want to show that 4 r cube is equal to that expression so the way we're going to do that is just expand the brackets and simplify and see what we get okay should be fairly straightforward for us so in the brackets uh, r squared plus 2 r plus 1 second bracket um, r squared minus 2 r plus 1 let's expand the full brackets now so r to the power 4 plus 2 r cubed plus r squared minus the second set of brackets r to the power 4 minus 2 r cubed uh, plus r squared right because we've got the first bracket subtract the second one that means that that and that will go and also this and this will go and because we've got 2r cubed minus negative 2r cubed so you've got 2r cubed plus 2r cubed so you get 4r cubed part a is done normally one or two marks for doing that part b now we're we want to use what we've done in part A to help us do part B, but watch out. We have just proved that 4R cubed equals that. We want to find the sum of R cubed, not 4R cubed. So we're going to have to put a quarter in some way, uh, in some place. So if I was doing this question, the first thing that I would do is this i would say since 4r cubed is equivalent to r squared r plus 1 all squared minus r minus 1 all squared r squared therefore r cubed is equal to or equivalent to a quarter of that so that's going to be important that we state that out and we don't miss that quarter out yes yeah, students often miss that bit out and they just jump straight into what they've done in part a and then realize right at the end they can't it doesn't prove so make sure that you compare what you've shown with what's actually asked of you don't miss that out always watch out for that so what that means is if i want to find the sum of the series produced by r cubed from the first term to the nth term what i'm going to do is do a quarter of the sum of this instead r squared r plus one all squared minus um, r minus one all squared r squared now notice we took the quarter and we put it here that's one of the rules with uh, the sum um, that we can take a constant and we can move it over to the other side and that just makes things a little bit easier 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first part of that expression and then I'm going to take the second part of the expression here. I'm going to write out what the, the terms are of each one. So let's start with this. And I'm going to substitute in one, two, three, and then just jump to n and see what I get. So if I, the first term, I, I'm going to get one squared. This is putting r equals one into this. Then in the brackets, you'll get two. So it'll be one times two squared. The next term after that, if you put two into that, you'll get two squared times three squared. And then you'll get three squared when you put three in times four squared plus dot 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 and when i miss all those out i'm going to go straight to the last term um, which is going to be n squared times by n plus one all squared yeah don't expand the brackets or anything like that leave it as it is i'm going to make the working as easy as possible and now i'm going to take this one and do the same thing down here and remember that i'm doing all the stuff in blue minus all the stuff that is in this dark red so i'm going to put a big minus sign there to remind me right so this time if i substitute in r equals one i will get zero squared times one squared if i substitute in r equals two i'll get one squared times two squared r equals three i will get 2 squared times 3 squared plus dot 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 and the nth term is going to be um, n minus 1 all squared times by uh, n squared let's just write n squared don't need the times n squared here right now what we're going to do because we're doing everything in blue minus everything in uh, dark red at the bottom there's going to be some stuff that cancels out. Can you see this term cancels out with this term? This term cancels out with this term. Now, if you look at the pattern of cancelling, what happens? You're sort of cancelling out diagonally across like that. So it actually means that this term here would cancel out with the term that would comes there, but I've, I've not done. And if we carry on the pattern of cancelling well it's going to be this term here that cancels out with the one that would have written before it that just leaves this term and this term they're the only two left so what's left well it's n squared uh, times by n plus one all squared subtract zero squared times one squared let's write all of this down yeah without leaving anything out so um what have we got left so that sum leaves us with n squared n plus one squared the last term that didn't cancel out with anything of the one in blue and the first term didn't cancel out with anything okay now that just leaves n squared n plus one all squared and remember we had a quarter in front of that so it's a quarter of basically what's left over and you can see that we've proved it yeah we've put an extra bracket in which we don't really need but we've proved that that sum is that using this method of differences. So in this question, the part A and B is all together. Um, part A, the algebraic bit, is going to be this part here, just proving that what you get on the left and the right is the same. And the part B is here. So it's very similar to the last one but it's, it's all in, in one question, but the steps are the same. So let's start in part, in the first bit, let's start with the right hand side and let's make that look like the 
left hand side. So first thing we want to do is to make the denominators the same. So that means multiplying the first fraction top and bottom by r plus 1. And the second fraction multiplying the top and the bottom by r. Now they've got the same denominator, they can be put together. So you'll have r plus 1 minus r over r, r plus 1. So uh, that just leaves 1 over, because r minus r just cancels out. Okay, so that's part A done. Or the first bit done. Now we want to find the sum of 1 over r plus 1 and notice unlike the last example that's exactly the same as what we've got written here so we don't need to do a quarter of anything or anything like that we can take this and use it straight as it is so we want to find the sum of 1 over r times r plus 1 but instead we are going to find the sum is equivalent to finding the sum of 1 over r minus uh, 1 over r plus 1. So we're going to use this method of differences again to work out what that is. So I'll do it like color coded like I did before. So I'm going to write out what this is in green and then the other one I'll write in a different color. So I'm just going to substitute in R, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So the first one is just going to be, first term is going to be 1, plus, 1 over 1, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, plus dot dot dot, up to 1 over N. We're going to do the same with this bit here. So in purple, so let's write down what that is here. So remember, we're doing the that 1 over r subtract 1, o, 1 over 1 plus r. So uh, let's write out that. Remember, we've got a big minus between them. So we'll have um, 1 over 1 plus 1. So we'll have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus dot dot dot. And then the last term is going to be 1 over n plus 1. Right, let's see what cancels out in this one. So can you see that this cancels out with that? That cancels out with that. This is going to cancel out with, with that one there. So let's draw what the cancelling pattern looks like. Things are getting cancelled out like that, which means that 1 over n will get cancelled out with whatever was written there. What does that leave? That just leaves 1 over 1 minus that. Okay, so we're left with basically 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. All we're going to do now is just tidy that up, put it over one denominator. So 1 we can write as n plus 1 over n plus 1, that's the number 1, minus 1 over n plus 1. They can go together to give you n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. It's just tidying up really. So that just leaves you with n over n plus 1. So uh, we could even write down hence by the method of differences, method of differences, the sum of 1 over r um, times r plus 1 equals n over n plus 1. Now notice on this one there is no part A or B, so we need to take what we've got here and we need to write it in this form. So we need to work out what those two expressions are where one's the difference of the other.
that's our job. It's, it's we're not given any clues. Well, we suppose we are given a clue in that the bottom here is the difference of two squares. So let's write that as one over two r plus one times by two r minus one. So it's the difference of two squares on that one. And then we can actually use uh, the method of partial fractions to um, split that up. Yeah, I'm just going to put that as a one look like an R. So we're now going to use partial fractions because we've got a way of splitting that up into partial fractions that you've learned, I think, in chapter one of the pure year two book. And we're going to use the same method. So basically, we want to write this uh, in the form a over 2r plus 1 plus b over 2r minus 1. We want to write it in that form. Now we could go through the whole process, but the quick way of doing it is to say, right, uh, I'm going to end up comparing the, the numerators. And what I'm going to get for the numerators on both sides is this. We should be able to do this quite quickly without writing all the other steps in between. OK, and now what we know we do from here, we choose values of R that's going to make uh, one bracket uh, disappear or the other bracket disappear. So let's do it up here. So we'll say let R equal a half. So if we let r equal a half, we will have one. And then what will happen is if I put a half there, that bracket will disappear, just leaving me with um, b times by two times a half, which is one, one plus one. OK, so basically two b equals one, b equals a half for our value of b and then um, if I do the same for um, the other bit and if I say let r equal negative a half then what happens is the second bracket here will disappear if we put a negative a half in so we'll just be left with one is a two times negative a half is negative one so we'll end up with negative 2b is equal to 1, sorry, negative 2a is equal to 1. So that means a equals negative a half. So these are the bits we're interested in here. Now what that means is, is that the expression that we started with, 1 over 4r squared minus 1, can be written as is equivalent to now if a is negative a half we can do minus one over two so there's my half two r plus one then the second one b is a half so plus one over two there's my half and then two r minus one now because this is about differences all i'm going to do is switch it around so that I write um, 1 over, um, could I expand the brackets? Um, I can do, I could leave that as it is. As soon as it's fairly straightforward, I think I'm going to expand the brackets. So I'm going to swap this, the second term and the first term over. So I'll have 1 over 4r uh, minus 2. So 4r minus 2, it's the brackets, minus, so I've put, put it there because I want the, the difference in the middle of the two terms. And that will be uh, 1 over 4r plus 2. Right, now we write out the terms by substituting in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Right, so if I start with uh, the first one here. 
and write that out. I suppose really what I should do is I should have written out that the sum of this is equal to finding the sum of this. So let's do that. Let's just put a sum sign here. So we're basically finding the sum of this r equals one to n. So there's no confusion um, about what I'm doing. Right, so if I put r equal to one, I'll have one over four minus two. So I'll end up with a half. If I put r equal to two, I'll end up with one minus eight minus two, so one over six. R equals three. Normally the first term and the nth term is, is enough. Um, so if I put R equals three, I'll get one over 12 minus two, so that's one over 10. I can see the pattern did the, the denominators going up by four each time. Plus dot, 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 what would the last term be? It's gonna be one over four N minus two. Right, let's do the same for this one here. I may do that down here. Remember to put the big minus sign in because I'm subtracting one from the other. So again, substitute the values in. So if I substitute one in, I'll end up with uh, one over four plus two, one over six. Um, then uh, if I put two in, one over 10. If I put three in, one over 14 plus dot, dot, dot. And the very ones, last one's gonna be one over four N plus two. Let's have a look to see where the canceling out pattern is. So this will cancel out with this, that with that. So the canceling out pattern goes this way diagonally which means that that will get cancelled out with whatever's got written there. That will get cancelled out with whatever's got written there. So we'll, we'll cross those out like that. And that's all that's left is going to be, uh, let's circle them, this term minus this term. So all that leaves is a half minus one over four n plus two. Right, so uh, like we did before in a previous one, let's put these together. So they're over the same denominator. So uh, this is the same as four n plus two over two times uh, four n plus two. I suppose I could have done a smaller denominator since two is a, a common factor, never mind, I've started it already. And then the next one times by two, we'll simplify at the end. Um, yeah, times the top and the bottom by two, four N plus two. Let's put these together, four N plus two minus two, all over two, four N plus two. Okay, that's going to give us uh, 4n over 2, 4n plus 2. Right, we can divide the top and the bottom by 2, so that'll leave us with 2n over 4n plus 2. I can divide it by 2 again and just leave me with n over 2n plus 1. So, hence, by the method of differences, the sum of so hence by method of differences the sum of this 1 over 4 r squared minus 1 is equal to n over 2n plus 1 n over 2n plus 1 Right, let's start with part A. I'm gonna give myself plenty of space because I think it's probably gonna be a lot of working since there's three bits to it. Part A, express that in partial fractions. So I wanna express this in the form um, 
A over the first denominator plus B over the second denominator. I'm not going to faff around with all the working that you would do in between, just to say that the uh, numerator on the left hand side will equal the numerator on the right hand side, it would be equivalent to numerator on the right hand side, which when I cross multiply, I'm going to get A times R plus 3 plus B times R plus 1. Okay, so let's let R equal negative 3, so we can work out what B is. When R equals negative 3, we end up with 2 equals, um, so negative 3 plus 1 and negative 2B, that means that B is negative 1, just highlight that so we don't lose it. Then we're going to let um, R equal 3. Oh, sorry, R equal um, negative 1. R equals negative 1. And if we make R equals negative 1, we'll end up with 2. The first bracket, um, or the second bracket, will disappear this time. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So 2A, which means that A equals 1. So uh, part A, if we express um, that function in partial fractions, we will end up with 1 over R plus 1. And since B is negative 1, minus 1 over R plus 3. OK, so here's our answer for part A. And we can see we've got the difference there. OK, part B. Uh, so we want to prove that by the method of differences. So we're not going to find the sum. Well, we are going to find the sum of this. But we're going to find the sum of this, what they want us to find. by finding the sum of its equivalent, which is actually the sum of this. 1 over r plus 1 minus 1 over r plus 3. Right, let's write out the terms. Now, I'm not going to put bubbles around everything, but I will sort of just color code it. So maybe I'm going to write these out in green, and I'll write these out in purple. And then we'll look for the cancelling pattern. So this is just substituting in the 1, 2, 3 and so on. Right, so if I substitute in 1, I get a half. If I substitute in 2, then 3. And then up to the nth term, I'm going to get 1 over n plus 1. For the bottom one, if I uh, write out the terms, so r equals 1, I get a quarter, and then a fifth, if I substitute in r equals 2, r equals 3, and then the last term I'm going to get is 1 over n plus 3. Now this cancelling pattern is slightly different to the previous ones we've done because you sort of jump a bit. So what you're going to find is that term there cancels out with this one, two terms across. So let's do that. That's going to cancel out with that. Then this one is going to cancel out with the one that's there. So the, the cancelling pattern, it sort of jumps a term. But you're still going to get stuff that cancels out. So all the ones at the top, they're all going to cancel out. It's going to cancel out with... Um, two terms before it in the previous one. So um, let's just put an arrow in here to show that that one six would cancel to whatever term is um, here. So that will cancel out with that. This would cancel out with a term here, but there would still be a term here that doesn't cancel out because this one 
councils out, not with the term like diagonally, directly diagonally below, but sort of one across and diagonal. So there's still going to be that term there. And that term that doesn't get cancelled out either, that's going to be one plus, uh, over. Now remember, it's the one before the nth term. So it's going to be n minus one plus three, uh, which is the same as one over n plus two, if you simplify it. Right, so that leaves this term and this term, subtract this term and this term. These are the only ones that don't get cancelled out. The first two in the first list, a half and a third and remember it's minus we should have a big minus sign here and the ones that don't get cancelled out from the bottom bit are going to be this one minus we're going to be subtracting this and we're going to be subtracting this as well So we're, we're trying to prove that it equals that statement, find the, the values of A and B. The rest is now putting it all together. So from here, um, we want everything over the same denominator. Um, so that's going to be one. I'm, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do one. Um, Actually, let's do it like this. So the first fraction is going to get multiplied top and bottom by 3 and n plus 2 and n plus 3. The second fraction is going to get multiplied by 2 top and bottom n plus 2 and n plus 3. The third fraction is going to get multiplied by 2 and 3, so 6 and n plus 3 and the last fraction is going to get multiplied by 6 and n plus 2 so that they are all over a common denominator of 6 n plus 2 n plus 3 so the last step is now just tidying up the bottom or sorry tidying up the top you can see the bottom matches up OK, uh, we're going to multiply that all out and simplify it. So to speed things up a bit, I've just expanded all of these uh, brackets here, wrote them down here. And now what I'm going to do is to uh, write down what all of that becomes. So 5n squared and then 25n minus 12n is 13n. And then 18 plus 12 minus 18 minus 12 um, just all cancels out. So it's just 5n squared. Let's run that down. 5n squared plus 13n. Right, so the values of a and b. A, oh, right, we need to factorize it, don't we? Just take the n out. So the top will just become n. And then 5n plus 13 over that 6n plus 2n plus 3. So we can write down up here that a is 5 and b is 13. Part c, you can see that we're finding the sum from 21 to 30 so that means if we want to find the sum of 21 to 30 we need to find the sum of 1 to 30 and subtract the sum from uh, 1 to 20 so it's just now a matter of putting those numbers in to our expression so we start by putting 
um, 30 into the expression that we got from part B, which is this. So we will have um, 5 times 30 squared, and is 30, plus 13 times 30 over 6 times, not 60, 6 times um, 30 plus 2 times by 30 plus 3 and we want to subtract the whole thing again but with 20 so 5 times 20 squared plus 13 times 20 all over 6 times 20 plus 2 times by 20 plus 3 let's type that all in on our calculator and see what we get Okay, I've just changed it. I've changed this so that I've put it actually into the final form, the factorized form, rather than put it in this one, because you may have been wondering, why did I use that? I've, I've corrected it. I've put it in what the final expression is that gives us this. Uh, and if we work that out, we get 0.2, sorry, 0.0. .0 two seven three seven nine seven it goes on and they want it to five decimal places so one two three four and that seven will round up to eight to five decimal places so there's our answer for that one um, so now you should be in a position where you can do exercise 2A on pages 36 to 37.